with Kristen Refinac. I'm a third year student physical therapist at Elon University. I looked into the use of TENS for relieving phantom limb pain and residual limb pain for current transtibial amputees. I read the article, Transcutaneous Electrical Nerve Stimulation for Phantom Limb Pain in Amputees. Um, and this was a single study design. It was a level three evidence. Basically, this, the design of the study was patients were recruited from a pain management center and 10 patients ended up taking part in the study, all of them transtibial amputees who met the inclusion criteria of complaining of three out of 10 pain in the past month, as well as they were able to utilize their prosthetic uh, limb for at least two hours per day, two times a week. Um, all participants were screened at baseline and they were rated their phantom limb pain, residual limb pain, and their ability to propriocept have good proprioception through their prosthetic limb on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being the worst pain imaginable for both the phantom limb pain and residual limb pain, and 10 being they could fully propri like pro propriocep they could have full proprioception through the prosthesis. So um, patients were provided a portable TENS unit, similar to this one, and the only thing that was not standardized in the study was the electrode placement. Electrode placement was based on personal preference for each patient. So you could place the electrodes either two of them below the knee or above the knee. And for nine out of the 10 participants, electrodes were placed below the knee. For one participant, their pain radiated up through the leg and above the knee, so they chose placement that was more, um, that was a little bit more distal on the thigh instead of distal to the knee. So electrodes were placed, two five by five centimeter electrodes are placed below the knee. And electrodes could be moved throughout the treatment session if the patient was not feeling, uh, was not able to feel the tens down into their, their residual limb or the portion of their phantom limb pain. So it was a single channel that was utilized. Patients were hooked up to the portable TENS unit. They remained seated for 60 minutes of the treatment. Um, pain was assessed at baseline, 30 minutes into the treatment session, 60 minutes into the treatment session, and then during what they perceived to be their most painful movement. It could have been anything from a sit to stand, walking, um, getting up off the floor, anything that was painful for them. However, they remained seated for the whole entire 60 minute portion of the treatment. So settings that were used, the, after the electrodes were applied to the most painful site, the unit was put on continuous, a continuous mode on the 10 setting. The pulse duration was set at 80 microseconds with a frequency of 100 hertz. Amplitude was adjusted by patient comfort, and it could be as high as they wanted to, but it had to be a comfortable setting. So we would turn our amplitude up to be as comfortable as she would want it. Um, after the study concluded at the 60 minutes, it was just a one-time treatment. Patients were called 48 hours later to discuss if any adverse reactions had occurred. The results of the study demonstrated that pain at rest decreased in nine out of the 10 participants at 30 minutes and eight out of the 10 participants at um, 60 minutes. Pain during their painful movement was less at the 30 minute mark for nine participants and every participant at 60 minutes and the intensity for which they could pro have good proprioception through their prosthetic limb was assessed at the 60 minute mark and the 30 minute mark and every participant felt maximum proprioception through their limb at both time frames. Um, all patients reported no adverse effects from the TENS and their pain all decreased. As far as utilizing this technique with patients in the clinic, um, the one hesitation I have was the study had a very small um, 
small sample size and there was only one time that the TENS was used. There is some better levels of evidence to support other treatments of phantom limb pain and residual limb pain. However, if you've utilized those routes and those haven't worked, I would then try to proceed with maybe trying this particular protocol for using the TENS unit to alleviate both the phantom limb pain and residual limb pain.